Welcome everyone to VO in Stereo. I'm Jared Breshers, and this is Stephen Coghill. And today we have a very special guest, and it's our honor to have world traveled wife, mother, and voice talent international, Bridget Rio. Thanks, guys. Go off applause. Go off. Welcome. 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 I'm so excited to be here. We are so excited to have you. It's not even funny. You are our first guest, and we're very excited to have you. I, and you know, you guys are only my second, like, interview. I did, I did a, a thing for Val, I think, like, two years ago, and I haven't done, that's the last time somebody asked me. Val By the way, killer? I'm going to apologize ahead that's of time outrageous. for my AC that's going to come on throughout this session. <laughs> so it's going to go on and off. Everybody needs to be cool. No. Everybody needs to be cool. Zoom, Zoom has pretty good uh, noise cancellation, so I think we'll be fine. Cool. We should be good. Well, I guess we're having you here because we want to learn more about you personally. And okay. uh, we're just going to ask you some questions. And uh, yeah. So cool. Stephen is going to go ahead and uh, he's going to kick it off for us. Cool. Bridget, on. thanks for being on. Oh. Thanks for having me. You look lovely, by the way. Well, thank you. Thank Before you, by the way, for telling me I was going to be on camera. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Full transparency. I, this girl know. hadn't taken a shower today, and I thought I was just going to be on mic. And I was like, that's cool. And I checked with you, you and you're like, oh, no. Now. And I was like, Thanks. you're like, yeah, I'm going to need, I'm gonna need <laughs> some minutes. That's why I was really <laughs> glad that you hit me up. <laughs> and I'm like, this is not camera, right? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of going to be on camera. Sorry. No, which is cool. <laughs> just just, just got a water girl. Uh, oh my god! Hey guys, uh, yes. <laughs> right. I'll remember that for the future guest. Make sure they know they're Absolutely. on camera. <laughs> so I have a question to start this off with, which is cool. a very basic question, and then we'll move from there. Okay. But where where are you originally from? I know that might that's be a, a that's question. not a basic question it's for me. Not not for you. For most no. people, yes, but not for you. Yeah. Um, my dad was in the military, so I grew up all over the place. I moved every three years. And then um, they, my dad retired in 85 to Maryland. And I went to middle school and high school and college in Maryland, met my husband there. Um, and then we started moving with his work because he's with State Department. So then we moved to Belgium and then back to Maryland and then off to Rome and then Rome to Portugal. So. Maryland is home base as much as anything can be, but like I was actually born in Florida, so. So you were born in Florida, but you spent a lot of time in, in Maryland. Florida, Tennessee, Ohio, Scotland, Ohio, Germany, Maryland. Yeah, just kept going. That's crazy. Yeah. I knew world traveler. Yes, with um, very little childhood friends because you're always leaving them. <laughs> is that and right? And a global citizen. Yes. That's got to be awesome, though. I'm like, the I love it. And, and I'm lucky I married a, an amazing man who, uh, who is also a global citizen. So, like, we share that, which is pretty. Girl, you're talking about your man. I just got hotter in the booth. <laughs> right, you got the vapors. <laughs> He's got the best haircut. <laughs> he does, right? Bald men. Bald right. men rock. We do. Right? We do. It's all about the bald look. We're more aerodynamic. Exactly. And I will also say, He's also got, you know, rocking the goatee. So bald man, goatee, uh, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. You know. I had one a long time ago, but it just doesn't, doesn't matter. You're still beautiful. pretty. You are still pretty. I, you know, I have to say not everybody can do, like, the full bald look. Like, when my husband takes off the goatee, I'm like, no. Oh, That's no. True. Mm. That's true. I have a cleft butt chin thing, and I can't. <laughs> They're like, sir, we need to card you for bubblicious. I'm like, go to hell. <laughs> Sometimes naked looks strange. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't want him growing a full beard either, because that's just, that's, that's a whole nother bad look for him. Yeah, so. yes. You're right. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole nother situation. Um, were you a creative kid? I was. I was. I've always been involved in, like, theater in some way, shape, or form. So when I was in middle school, started doing, you know, like, local theater. When I was in high school, uh, drama department was my entire life. And then I was actually in college, I was traveling to and from Philly, working uh, on recording uh, an album and things like that, actually Philly and then New York. And then that kind of fell through. And then I had, then I got pregnant. Mm. So I had my first baby. 
So then I kind of like switched gears and went to teaching. And then what were you teaching? Montessori. I was a Montessori teacher for 10 ah. years. I taught, I am technically Montessori certified from six weeks up to sixth grade. Wow. So, yep. But yeah, I mean, when I left teaching, after I did one year in admin, I worked at School of Rock and wow. I was a vocal instructor at School of Rock. Yep. Interesting, interesting. That was so one of my questions because I was like, oh my God. Ah! <laughs> that is so cool. Sorry. I'm I loved working at School of Rock. It was so cool. And I got, and the, the cool thing was they had like the, the adult band, the, we called it grad school. And so I got to sing with grad school, which was really cool. Um, and yeah. And then actually that's what was sort of my turning point into VO. I mean, I can back up a little bit and say when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a voice actor. Like, well, I wanted to be the voice of a cartoon. Like, oh. I loved watching, like, Saturday morning cartoons, and I wanted to, to be that, you know, which is funny because I don't do animation. Like, that's not my world at all. Um, but that's I'm, a place to get you started. That's a place to get interest started for you. What's that? That's a place to get interest started for you though is watching right exactly morning cartoons and wanting to emulate those yeah so then you know it just it was interesting that i found out about vo through a friend um that it was more online and that was like seven years ago and so i started researching it and everything else and then you know uh through school of rock my manager gave me a crash course on audio engineering so he gave me my first microphone and gave me my first preamp and um, it like got me kind of started and you know was like, okay, here's what you're gonna do. And he like taught me audacity really quickly and and then from there just kinda grew step by step. Yes, as you did. Yeah. And um and is that and so pretty much that's what drew you to the world of VO was cartoons and basically an inspiration yeah. like that. I was such a Saturday morning cartoon girl. Like even when we were living in Germany, my grandmother would uh, send me VHS tapes of Saturday morning cartoons, like taped for weeks. That's awesome. So, so you get your and, fix. Yeah, I got. I had to get my fix. I'd watch them over and over again, and I'd like try and do the voices. And you know, I was like a big Mel Blanc fan, and you know, anything from Hanna Barbera. I mean, it was just like I was addicted to it. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't. Yes, turn off I know. Phone. Whenever you're in an interview, people always want to bother you. Of course they do. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Good. Life happens. So, what, what are some of your favorite cartoons from then? I gotta know. Ooh, that's a tough one. I know Let's you can see. name like seventeen because it was probably the '80s, and that's the best ever time. I mean, I was a huge Pac-Man fan. <sighs> I know, and um, I love this. On that show is so I good. Know. It tells about Pac-Man and the other one. Oh, so good. I love Pac-Man. And I loved, um, uh, oh my gosh, just left my brain because, of course, it would. Um, why not? Why wouldn't it? Let me think. What other Mr. cartoons T. were I? Oh, the Smurfs. Oh. Like, loved. I mean, you can't go wrong with the Smurfs, especially from, like, the Saturday morning cartoon, like, generation, and there was, like, um, there was even, like, Punky Brewster. I mean, there was, like, yeah. everything at that point, but then I remember it wasn't Saturday morning cartoons, but it was after-school cartoons as well, so I would come home, and I would watch, like, the Jetsons and the Flintstones, and then, like, Transformers, and, um, uh, was it called GoBot? It wasn't GoBots. What was GoBots, that? the B-rated uh, Yes, the B-rated, right. right. And He-Man and Shira. Like, I just loved all of it. I would just all be, like, it? glued to my TV. So, yeah, that was a thing. <laughs> and did you have, um, did you have, like, coaching as you were growing up? Did you just kind of teach yourself the ropes, or how did you? No, you I mean, I didn't even know that that was a thing. You know, like, I just... Um, <laughs> I said it was, I was always into theater and singing and I come from a very musical family. Like my mom is an incredible singer and she's, oh. um, she has this ridiculous gift for harmonies and she passed that on to me. So I think just that musical ear, 
just made me like really listen to things. And so I would hear things. Um, and then living overseas, like I could pick up accents really, really quickly. So I just kind of became fearless when it came to that sort of concept, you know? Yeah, there's nothing like immersion for learning, uh, you know, accents and that sort of thing, just being around them and absolutely uh, and then trying, for sure. trying, to, trying to fake it on yep listening to a few samples um uh did you get a someone was someone inspiring for you did you see did you look up for to somebody or did you reach out to somebody and and, and somebody like help you get to the next level or or did you kind of find your own path um in terms of vo i credit christina malizia because when i first started with vo i was um, I was just winging it, you know, I was like looking at Google and YouTube and things like that and just like figuring it all out. And, you know, um, and, and I was on obviously pay to plays and whatnot, but I, and I had made a, a couple of dents, like I'd gotten probably about a handful of jobs, but then in terms of like really carving out any sort of career, I didn't know where I was going. Um, so Christina Malizia was a LinkedIn contact for me and I reached, well, I had reached out to her after I saw a post that she had on LinkedIn about, um, about, uh, Fiverr. So she had posted a response to Stephen J. Cohen's article about Fiverr and, and she was like, well, now I'm not worried about the Fiverr community. And I was, I had just put together a Fiverr like profile, but I hadn't launched it yet. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't do this. So I reached out to her and I was like, hey, we're LinkedIn connections. You don't really know me, but you know, here's my situation. I'm putting together a Fiverr like profile, blah, blah. Do you think I shouldn't do that? And like within a few hours, she sent me back like a big old letter, like stop, don't do it. <laughs> you know, um, please, I've got this, this uh, resource, the GVAA, let me bring you in. And so she's like, I'm going to bring you into our group and I'm going to introduce you to the community and this and that. And so then she connected me to like David Rosenthal and uh, really just got me, she was, she was my doorway into the VO community. And then from there, uh, I did my, my consultation with Dave Rose, uh, David Rosenthal. And then after that, uh, got connected with Ann Ganguza. And so she was my first coach. Nice. Um, sweet yeah that's a pretty awesome story right there dude oh okay <laughs> i love her I, uh league of legends was the first time i even heard about her she is one of the oh dude she's amazing she's her amazing and group. she's just probably one of the liter legitimately one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet in your life like just you, you get cavities so kind when you're around her so sweet yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Like when, and she's so funny because she won't go, well, she will go to, to conferences, but she's so hesitant because, you know, of her, her back because she had an accident. And so she's like, you have to be gentle with me. So like, I walk up to her, I'm like, <laughs> you like, you know, like, like, like hugging a glass statue. Right. And I just, I feel like I have to whisper around her too, but you know, if you don't, you gotta pick up the body. She's just so awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, what was your first VO job? So I realize how horrible this is going to sound because I used to jokingly refer to it as a blow and go. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. Your first episode. Um, I, it was, it, 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 I got it off of um, Vo well, the DDC and it was uh, for an ignition interlock system. So wow, it's one of those things that like crazy. you have to blow into in order for the car to start. And I started saying, well, you know, I got, I got this job for a blow and go. And then I was like, after a while, I realized that's just the absolute <laughs> wrong thing that anybody should ever say. But yeah. It brings up all kinds of connotations. <laughs> oh, just That'll none, be of a half any, none of them any good. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, so that was my first job. And it paid me a hundred dollars and it took me two days to record because I was so freaked out because I had no idea how to do pickups or, you know, punch and roll. There was no, in my world, there was no such thing as punch and roll. So like I was, I had, I barely understood how to edit anything. And so, like I said, it took me two days to record. 
Like just reading one line at a time and pretty much. Well, I recorded the entire thing and then I would listen to it. And then because some part of it wasn't right, I didn't know how to go back and record, you know, like pick it up. And so I kept just re-recording it and re-recording it. I had no idea how to clip things together. I mean, boy, oh boy. It was like a, I think it was a a 60 second spot. It Mm. was really like, if it, if, if it was two minutes, that's saying a lot. <laughs> but, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere. <laughs> got to start somewhere. <laughs> and um, what is your setup like at home? Is are you is this your setup at home or is this is my setup in the states? Um, so I've been here now for six months, and uh, thank you, Vocal Booth, to go. Uh, <laughs> I, so. <laughs> Back home in Portugal, I actually have a an, a full office, and I have it paneled out. I have a bunch of audio panels that I've made, mm-hmm. and uh, for a while, while I was getting everything set up, I just had my other Vomo in there, but I had it kind of like you know strategically placed in a corner. But at least it just kind of supported everything that I needed it to support while I was getting the rest of it all set up. So I've only been in Portugal for well we've been stationed there for a year now, but I've only been there for five months because I came here at the beginning of March. So, um, and the pandemic hit and then you got stuck here. I got stuck here, but I'm going home in, uh, on September 19th. Aww. I'm heading home. Happy I get to see the hubby and the, and the kiddo. I know he's That's going to be so awesome. Oh, can't wait. Little Jay's face. Oh, Jay's face. He just turned 17 yesterday. Uh, I know. That was the cutest video with the driving. Beep, beep, uh, hands on the wheels, mom. Yeah, she, she does that all the time to me. And she's like, oh, God, oh, or she'll like scream something like that at me. And it's, we can't help but just like crack up at her because she's funny. But um, yeah, so my studio at home is an actual office that's paneled out. And then this works for any travel needs. But I have um, my 416. I just upgraded to the Apollo Twin. I also have an Apollo Arrow. I also have an Audion ID4. Um, and I'm a Windows girl and an Adobe girl. So. Sounds like you got all the tools. I do. What you know about Windows? Hi. You know about Windows. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I love I love Windows. So, and my brother works for Dell, so I got a decent well, deal on that. If you got the hookup, you got the hookup. Hook up. I Holla if you hear me. I get it. I don't. I don't know anybody in Mac in the Mac land, in Apple land, so I can't. You know, I got mine for no discounts. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Mac. do you see yourself <laughs> moving forward? Like, where do you want to see Bridget Real heading? So, in my perfect dream world, right? I want to be doing promo and in-show narration and documentary. Like I just, I get giddy when I do that. So I'm actually in the process of doing a new uh, commercial demo. And then I'm going to start shopping that around to get some LA representation. And then, um, yeah, and then hopefully it'll go from there. Cause I know that, you know, with where I want to go, it's all in the LA market. So, um, uh, need to work in in that you know get myself into to that world but the nice thing is after portugal which will be there for another two years then the goal is for us to be posted in la for about three years so that i can uh build the business there put down your foundation get my foundation exactly and then the the ultimate goal is for us to, to divide our time between portugal and california on our private jet and you yacht, know, we got a time me, machine or no, a teleporter. That's it. Yes. I am waiting for teleportation to be a thing. Like for real. That just needs to I need to teleport about 40 pounds, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. How crazy. You're so crazy. Oh, I got a question. It's not like so like, but I have to know. Like, you travel a lot, so there's got to be something that maybe you can't get everywhere. But, like, what is that comfort food and drink for you? Like it just says, maybe you're not home, but, like, I feel so much better just to have this. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, 
Well, I know it's controversial for some of my, my LGBTQ um, community, and I do love them and support them. But I love me some Chick-fil-A. Uh. I am an addict for those nuggets. And um, so when I do come home, I, I will usually hit up Chick-fil-A, um, Chipotle, because where I've lived, they haven't had that. Cilantro um, and the rice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> what else do I really love? Um, oh, oh, without a doubt. And I have been getting my fill since I've been back in Maryland is crab cakes. <sighs> Maryland crab cakes. And my, in my parents' town, which is where I am right now, they have a local person who makes crab cakes that will literally stop your heart. They're so good. <laughs> and they're like baseballs. And I like my dad's like, you want to have crab cakes tonight? I'm like, yep. And so yep. he'll go and he'll pick them up. And he's like, how many you want? I'm like, threaten me with a good time. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> right? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I, I mean, whenever right I would say like what makes me feel really at home is probably like Maryland crab because it's just. Oh. Old Bay. Mm-hmm. Right. I can get Old Bay. The nice thing is embassies do tend to stock Old Bay. So that is a that is a thing. That but getting a, like a proper like Maryland style crab cake is like heaven. Sweet. Yeah. Heaven. Heaven. <laughs> but I've been really lucky, you know, I was living overseas. I've had some pretty extraordinary food. So I'm sure just you have. seeing some of the places you've been and you know, like just peeping on some of them excellent websites. <laughs> oh. Now your daughter does VO. I noticed that you guys kind of share um you know, like billing on your uh, website. Say that again. I said, I said it looks like um, your daughter had does uh, voiceovers and you guys kind of share equal billing on your website. We do. We do. Absolutely. Um, Let's talk about that. How did your daughter get in? Did you inspire her? Or did she was like, mommy, I just want to do some voiceover like you. So she was 11. So she, that was six years ago. And uh, I had been doing, you know, I'd been doing it for about a year and she saw me doing, you know, on pay to plays and stuff like that, doing auditions and whatnot. And then she was like, Ooh, that looks like fun. And this was before she had hit that like teenage, like can't be bothered stage. And so she was like, well, I think I would want to do it. And I'm like, okay. And she had a little YouTube channel. She still does. I think she'll probably, I think she's probably pulled most of the, the videos off. But she had some really funny videos, um, kind of in like that early, um, uh, like Vine kind of vein, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, so I was like, yeah, you're creative. You can definitely do it. And she is, now Jace is an incredible singer. I mean, talk about pipes. She's unbelievable. And I'm not just being a biased mom. I mean, I am being a biased mom, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and uh, so I was like, okay, cool. And I think all the different sites had like free kid profiles. So I made her profiles and I will never forget. She did two auditions in one day. And the first one she did was for Disney. And then the second one, I don't even remember what it was. Now, when I first started, I auditioned for like five months before I booked my first job. Girlfriend auditions the very first time and gets Disney. She booked Disney. Um, so That's yeah, impressive. her first job was a Disney princess commercial. And then they brought her back to do the Descendants mobile game app. And huh. uh, so then she, of course, she got the bug because she got paid. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so money, was, money, money, money. <laughs> right? And I was like, okay. So then I was like, all right, let's do this. And, and she was very easy to direct and she was like definitely into it. But then once we moved to Rome, oh, it was like, right. she was entering middle school and, you know, suddenly social life took over and then Teenager. went into, you know, high school. Like the more, the, the further on we went in years, the, the more it was like, okay, okay. All right. And, uh, she would, the, the annoying part for me was just that she, usually jobs just walked through the door for her. And, or she would audition and she'd get them and I'd be like, this. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, and then she went through a whole phase where it was like, she just, she couldn't be bothered. And I still had her on the website. I still had her like, you know, cause I had the real voices, you know, I had the, the name. So I'm like, it doesn't really make sense to be real voices with one voice. One voice. So <laughs> I was like, well, I'm just going to hold out. And recently, like in the last year, she's like, why aren't I working? I'm like, cause you're not auditioning. So she's like, oh, oh, right. Okay. And now that she's older and she's got a warm voice, uh, she actually did an audition today and I was listening to it as I was editing it. And I was like, she sounds like Mila Kunis. So, mm, congrats. Just, yeah, I was congrats. like, that's pretty cool. But she's like, <laughs> she's, um, she's no longer that young voice. So she's got a lot more competition because she's starting to fit in with a lot of the voices, you know, a lot of the adult voices who can do like that, you know, millennial teenage kind of sound. So I'm like, well, you can, you can do this. You've got one more year and then you're off to college and who knows with the pandemic, what's going to happen with that. At least you can still make money. Speaking exactly. of the pandemic, um, how does that, how has that changed for you, the VO community and the whole way things are um, auditioned or um, handled? Like uh, is COVID really interrupting VO as far as that goes or how does that working? You know, I can't say that overall, you know, it's affected me all that much um, in, in terms of the opportunities and things like that. I mean, I know that like a lot of VO uh, talent in New York, in LA, where they were used to being able to go to studios and it was actually more of a requirement for them to go to studios. Now they all had to, you know, kind of put together their home studios. For those of us, especially someone like me, who's an expat and I, I live a very transient life, I'm used to kind of doing this. So from the standpoint of that, it didn't have any real impact. Um, I think it's been a unique situation for me in that I came to the States in March to help out with my mom uh, who fell sick. And then, um, and I was only expecting to be here for a month. And I showed up with my travel rig. Thank goodness I brought my full travel rig for a month. Uh, but then I, uh, it, it turned into a six month travel rig stint, you know? So it's been a unique sort of like, okay, let's make this work. So in the first eight weeks of the pandemic, I think I moved a total of 15 times because I was in and out of hotel rooms. I was in and out of, um, uh, various like places. Actually, I went like to a bunch of different hotel rooms. I went to my brother's house in Stafford. I went to my, came here to my parents' house in Maryland, went back out to Philly. Like, yeah, I think in total, when I figured it out, like I had moved 15 times. So, which was, so that was a really unique sort of uh, experience. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the work, certainly certain of my regular clients, kind of everybody was affected in that way. Uh, yeah. But I think it just kind of, and certainly my time was, was divided just because I was, I've been splitting my time between helping out my family and then, you know, going through all this. So, um, so in, and like balancing out the business and, and family. So, you know, I've had a very unique COVID experience, I think, in, in that sense. That's true. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a good story. Fantastic. It definitely makes for a good story. I mean, um, yeah, I never expected that I was going to end up like traveling to the U.S. for what I thought was a month and then get here for like six months and then have to go through <sighs> you know, uh, everybody else's pandemic experience of like being locked down, but then doing it in a, in a city, in a hotel, in a, you know, then like going to family and then like kind of traveling like all over the place, like constantly moving, uh, while I'm navigating like my mom's cancer battle. And then, you know, so it's, it's been, it's been, it's been pretty wild. I've actually taken video and pictures and, um, 
an audio of the entire thing. And I plan to put it all together into like a documentary and narrate it. So you awesome. should voice the documentary. Oh, I am. She nice. Just said she was oh, I to. am. Um, that brings up a really good question that I have because I'm interested in it because sometimes I fail at it myself um, with all that you're going through and all the emotional, just holy Jesus. Like, how do you self care for you? Like, how do you make sure you take enough time to like recharge your battery before you're whoop? Um, you know, honestly, it's a day by day thing. Um, you know, um, and this is where it kind of it, it gets gets a little sad you know like my mom is is dying and you know so that's a a unique um experience to be going through and there's a lot of gratitude that i've had to find in that um in the sense of because of covid all of my vo travel so all of the various like conferences that i would be going to all of um you know like the retreats and and anything that i would you know be going to got cut out and then I got you know trapped in Maryland so it's given me that ability to be really present for my mom and um so I've I've learned to find gratitude in that uh I won't lie yesterday was awful yesterday I was like on the phone with my husband crying um in different days it's just it's different things but I think um talking it out. I'm, I'm a very transparent person. I'm a very, like, I don't have a problem sharing what I'm going through with people and like telling people things, you know, like, and I think that just comes from my insistence with myself on being vulnerable. Well, so, we're honored because this has been really fun and special for me to be, you know, here. I'm Steven too. This is, thank you for sharing yourself oh, and your stories. Yeah. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. Thanks for asking. Oh. I love this. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, and oh, lots of bubble baths. So <laughs> that's a, must. a girl needs to take care of herself, give herself a bath and Absolutely. lots of tea, you know, Absolutely. things like that. You know, yes, you have to be comfortable. Agreed. Yep. Yep. And I realize oh. I can't have alcohol anymore, which just makes me a little bit sad in some ways because oh. I do like a good cocktail, but they don't seem to like me right now. So I'm like, well, I get, I get that. I get that. Yeah. yeah. For shame. So, so if you had to, um, if you had to give advice to someone starting out in the VO and they were interested in getting started, um, do you have some tips or do you have some advice that you give someone just starting out? Um, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I Run guess. Away. I mean, I do, I do a fair amount of mentoring. Uh, so, and, and I always, my mentoring is always with like people who are new to the industry. And my number one thing is, you know, just don't take shortcuts. And I say this having been a person who tried to take shortcuts for two years and I just stalled my overall progress. So, you know, there's a difference between being efficient and delegating tasks you don't need to take on and um, taking shortcuts and avoiding steps that are really helpful and important to your growth and your overall progress. So, you know, be vulnerable, be transparent, Um, don't be afraid to not know something. I know that sometimes in some of the Facebook groups, it can get a little, people can be a little prickly with some of the, the, the people who are new and especially right now, because there seems to be an influx of people who are out of work and we make it look interesting, fun, easy, and, you know, simple, you know, so, um, it's not. You know, you see no. a lot of people that are like, oh, I think I'm going to try and break into voiceover. I think I'm going to try and get into voiceover. And so I just try to tell people, like, don't take shortcuts. You know, like, it's a business. Treat it like a business. You know, you are, you, you are a small business. You need to understand everything from the audio engineering to, you know, how to record a file, how to edit a file, how to understand, like, what sounds right, what doesn't sound right how to name a file, how to 
you know, send it to a roster or a pay to play or, you know, an agent or what have you, how to do marketing, how to do invoicing, like, and when you write down everything that you have to do, you can get really overwhelmed by it. Quick. Really quick, right? When you like start to think about, like legitimately think about everything that is involved. For a while, you're still, some days you're like, to hell with all of this right now. (laughs) I need to breathe. Right. Right. It's kind of have like 17 toddlers following you to the bathroom. Can I just go to the bathroom by myself? <laughs> right. right. It's a, it's I mean, yeah, those work. of us who have been in this industry for a good long time, we still get overwhelmed by all the various little things that we have to do to keep our business running, you know, and to, to keep it thriving and, and to keep ourselves competitive. So, you know, treat it like a business. Don't take shortcuts. Get real organized. Write stuff down. You know, um, the more organized you become, the less overwhelmed you become, you know? That's true. Very true. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people getting into VO um, because I think the, because radio is dying. And I think a lot of radio DJs, especially, you know, everybody's been being laid off from serious uh, radio and all that. And I think they're all kind of turning to VO. I kind of see that online. Do you see that as well? Uh, just a lot of radio people are trying to get into VO. I see, so I run a, a, a mentoring for Gravy for the Brain once a month, and I see people from all, <laughs> I see people from all walks of life. Uh, I have seen former radio people, and it's interesting when you see the former radio people, because they're usually the ones that already have the booth set up at home and already have their little studio, but they've got like the radio mic. They don't have, you know, they don't have a a large condenser. They don't have, you know, a shotgun or something like that. They have, you know, you can see it's a, it's a radio mic. Um, And I've seen people who are teachers, a lot of teachers. Uh, I've seen, I had one woman who was, uh, I think she's like a former accountant or business person. So the nice thing for her was that I would talk to her because I was talking in in the beginners round table. I um, talked to them about their goals and I really try to help them like set up kind of like their mindset about like what they need to like get accomplished and how they can make it manageable. And um, so this woman, the nice thing was for her, I was like, well, you already understand business. I was like, this is another small business. And she was like, ah, okay. Um, but yeah, I see, I, I see all walks of life um, that are coming into the industry. I mean, certainly a lot of radio, but it kind of, it's amazing where it's all coming from. When you think COVID, Everywhere. do you think that's like interrupted jobs? Do you think there's more jobs out there or you think it's different jobs, like more specific during COVID or you think it's kind of business as usual? Well... I think certainly COVID has understandably made people nervous and scared to go into an office workspace, to go into the restaurant industry, to go back into the classroom, you know, anything like that, like a traditional setting is, is scary for a lot of people because they, they worry about, you know, if I go into this space, am I going to potentially catch this? And that's a very real, real and understandable fear in my eyes. So I can see where something like this, where you're like, oh, I can do this from home. Yeah, Just like there's been a lot of Etsy, uh, you know, accounts like Etsy marketers. Um, Buy my oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Only you $45. Know? The 100 <laughs> albino squirrel chipmunk fur. <laughs> right. How many people have we seen that have started making masks? I yeah, mean, right? goodness everybody. gracious, the, the I mass always market wondered what the world would look like if everybody was like a ninja, and now that I know. <laughs> you do. They're like, go up to it's... random people and be like, hi yeah, And they're like, what the hell? <laughs> like people making, making masks like rappers, you know? My they grandmother's are, a rapper. Man. Everybody's a rapper now. So, so I, I think, yeah. So I think, <laughs> like, I think the entertainment world, anything in the entertainment world, TikTok has certainly picked up. You know, people are, like, content creators in general are trying to um are, are, are coming forward and trying to make their mark you know guilty, <laughs> guilty. yeah guilty is charged yeah you know like 
And so I see where like our industry, especially, you know, with, when you see there's certain people that have gone out there and they're like, you can make money in your pajamas and you can like, you can make, you know, a million dollars, you know, and all you need is a, is a computer and a microphone and they just a make blue it. Yeti. A blue Yeti. A blue Child. <laughs> A <laughs> and a lot of ramen, you son of a gun. Yeah. <laughs> That's after you not get hired you, and have, oh, you get lots of ramen. You know, Fiverr has probably exploded because of this. Um, oh, yeah. Dude, I hear know. some of those on like national brand commercials. I'm like, you are all going to you know where for all of this. This is horrible. Mm -hmm. Why would you ever do that to your brand? <laughs> and if they don't care, I mean, get. I'd be lopping off somebody's head in the advertising department. I can tell you that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, you know, for those of us who want to keep it going and keep it, you know, strong and, you know, we just, we just keep, we just keep going the honest route and just, you know, and I, and I always, it's a tough place, you know, being in a, a mentoring spot. Cause I want to, encourage people but i also am very realistic with people i'm like okay here's what you have to be able to do and here's what you need to know and um because i, I and i and i don't purposely make it overwhelming i just make it very realistic because Sounds i don't like want to me, somebody just being a good some... mentor <gasps> <laughs> right <laughs> That's what I would expect, to be honest. I mean, seriously, there's so many people out there who will just take your money and a lot of your money quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, I just, I don't want people. It's like hundred dollar blow and goes. It's just. I know exactly. You can't trust those hundred dollar blow and goes. I was going to ask you, is that in the States right? Or is that an international? <laughs> I would just say it is in the U S and that it's, it's a, I won't name the company because God forbid this, like, you know, the, the company gets called off called out on it but yeah it was uh i'm that's probably so still funny. on their website so. that's funny that's awesome yeah but yeah i mean i think and i think we're just going to see more of it you know um so you just have to be competitive um and honest and just you know keep hustling if it's really your dream and you just got to keep at it and keep treating it like your business and you know integrity and morals integrity think justice league <laughs> are you doing any political um voiceovers in this uh environment i have had a few compared to some people i know a few other voice actors who are doing like non-stop uh but no i mean i've i've had a few this season like actually earlier on i haven't had any recently um but uh I certainly liked them. Actually, I got to do one back in November, December, and I got to do a voice match. Huh. And that was kind oh. of fun because then that kind of brought me back to being a kid and like trying to the mimic make, game, make the voice, you know, like try to like create that voice. And and the client really liked it and I had fun doing it. So um, but not so much. Most of my work. The vast majority of my work is uh, medical narration, e-learning, government narration. I mean, that's my bread and butter. Nice. And then, um, yeah, and then I've got uh, my commercial work has picked up recently, so that's kind of cool. So that is. I'm, I'm. I had actually Mark Scott told me today. He's like, "Do you think that's because you've like honed in on what you really want to do, and you know that commercial is going to be that way to lead into it? So now you're manifesting what it is that you want." And I was like. You might be onto something. Sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> it's all complete plan. It's all coming all together. Oh, exactly. So. so what are you working on now, Bridget Real? Uh in VO. Sure. In VO, uh I am working on some medical narration. I just got another module that came in today. And I've got another e-learning project and I just completed a commercial. I actually just got my first national commercial. I think what, it's the what? first time I've had a national commercial. <clears throat> I know, right? 
<laughs> Golf applause. Hello, Golf applause. So I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Um, and floating in the room. You know, I also have my little side hustle of video production. A lot of people are starting to realize that I do video production on the side. It's not really like my. More of them will know now. More shall know. But yeah, now I. <laughs> I discovered, well, actually, I found out when I was a teacher um, that I could do video production. I learned uh, Adobe Elements and, um, cool. and After Effects, and my class actually did a feature film for, like, our end of school year project, and that was a lot of fun. So I got to be the producer on that. We had a, one of the parents was a, a cameraman, so I learned how to do video production there. And then um, I had J. Michael ask me to do some video production for him. And uh, I've been then asked to do commercial demos and, you know, like people's demo videos. And that's kind of fun. I mean, like it's, it's, it's not like my passion, but I do like doing it just because it's a whole nother creative side of things. Mm. So I like making like full feature spots to people's like, demos like it's kind of it's, it can be really fun and creative so that sounds like fun is that in like any on-camera stuff or is it all just vo we don't it's see your beautiful just face? vo yeah so like i will get people's demo videos and then i will create um spots for each of the tracks and basically turn it into a you know a, a full demo video so i've done i've done a few of them now and um and it's kind of fun more yeah. importantly do you still sing do i still sing i that do a, i don't yes. you know what um the last time i was really singing was when i was living in rome and i was part of a a choir which was kind of different I mean, I, I came from a musical theater background and then I kind of transitioned into like the school of rock thing. So that was more like, you know, pop and country and rock and, you know, like hits. And then, uh, so to go into like the choir side was kind of interesting, but I got to perform at St. Peter's. I can say that I have performed at St. Peter's Basilica. So that was kind of cool. In a Roman um, choir. Yeah. You would tell me that and I would just be like, bloop, excuse me. I have to go to the restroom. <laughs> But, I gotta yeah. go make a deposit. <laughs> right? I was like, I've, I've done it at the uh, local auditorium in front of like 100 people. She's like, oh, that's cute. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Aren't <laughs> you precious? Aren't you just, you just going, Bless just your heart. Your little heart out. What kind of mayonnaise do you use? We know how to <laughs> either uh, invite you to the party or bury you. <laughs> that's a fight down here in the South, I'm telling you. Mm hmm. It is true. It's feud Mama words, names. boy. <laughs> so but, after yeah. all this, like, oh, is, please do. Is there anything else that we forgot to? Is there anything else you want to elaborate? Tell people where to find you once again, like hashtag.com, this, that, and the other. Please tell us anything else that we may have forgotten or you would just like to share. Hashtag Real Voices. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on Real Voices, realvoices.com, and on Instagram, and uh and twitter and linkedin and facebook it's wow. all real voices and nice. vimeo it's all real voices and youtube and tiktok i you know i am on tiktok <laughs> but i have not done any videos <laughs> i am a i am a tiktok stalker so like my guilty and i just realized like how much i really enjoy like watching tiktok I, there's, there's, I, I really like watching these, uh, lip sync, not like singing lip sync, but the people who do like monologues and they, and they lip sync the monologues. Yes. They're like, my group of friends is stuck on the Friday movie right now and they keep redoing that and it's cracking me up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I just, oh, I love that. But so I am on TikTok, but I am just simply a TikTok stalker. 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 For now. It's okay For to be now. that kind of stalker. Yeah, I mean, I used to, see, here's the thing, and maybe this is what Lynn and I need to, to do. Uh, Lynn Norris, who is my VO bestie, um, 
he and I, a few years ago, did a YouTube channel called The BS Guide. And it was, we were more or less like the female Bill and Ted. And we would give Whoa. people advice, like life advice. Like they would write into us and they would, uh, you know, asking a question and we would give them knowledge. Now, the knowledge that we actually gave them, we researched. So it was all like scientific and, and accurate and everything like that. But we presented it in the most ridiculous way. And, you know, I talk like this because I'm Britannia and she's Stephanie. She's my bestie. And we are just, you know, amazing like that. So we did, like, that was our YouTube channel, and we did, like, seven episodes, and they were so much fun, and we've got, like, all these other episodes of just, like, us riffing on things. It started off as, like, a, a joke at the Euro Retreat and turned into a thing. And then um, now I realize that it would be ideal for the, the, the TikTok world. So maybe I need to make a BS Guide TikTok channel and splice it up and put it there. That's exactly what I was going to suggest, but you were right on there with me. Yes. <laughs> as long as it's not banned anymore. Is it still banned? Does anybody know TikTok's still up? It's, no, it's still going. Oh, okay. I was just, I was just watching today. Okay. <laughs> Glad you admit that. <laughs> I'm not, You're not I'm ashamed. Not. I am afraid no of shame. my TikTok obsession. <laughs> no shame in this game. No shame in this game. Yeah, I can't help it. It's It's a... <laughs> And I have, like, so my daughter has some of her friends who, like, have some hilarious videos. So, you know, I'll, I'll watch those from time to time. That really makes me look like a TikTok, like a mom stalker. Like, <laughs> Gotta support the I children. I see what you and your friends are doing. Yep. I commented 20 times on that one post. You know what? My mom still does it, and she does it on Facebook type thing, where, like, they will end it mom like you don't know it's their picture like they don't understand their picture comes with it so they don't have to be like hey you all this is such a good thing love mom and i'm like well unless somebody stole your damn phone i know who the hell you are love grandma like yeah. they're writing a letter oh, jesus dude it's so funny i know it's it's hilarious oh no the best is when you know you're like you post something let's say profound, right? Like you, you post something that's like meaningful or whatever. And it's like, I tried to call you. You didn't answer your phone, but I found <laughs> your socks that you were looking for. Give me a call, sugar. You're like, right. <laughs> You're like, thanks. Yeah. So poignant. Right. <laughs> yeah. My mom actually yelled at me at Christmas time on, uh, on Facebook. She was like, we're trying to get in touch with you and we can't find you. She like posted it in response to, I don't even know. It's like, Again, some meme or, you know, thing, like, I was just listening thing, to and I was, like, <laughs> I was like, Mom. <laughs> Moms are silly. Oh, bless you, woman. Good. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thanks. Bridget, we thank you so much for being on with us. Oh, my gosh, you guys, this you've has been, been fun. A, you've been a fantastic guest. Oh, yes. Hello super honored thank you for being you like for real some people like to come and try to just be something else but it was really refreshing just to kind of kind of just felt like i just sat here and chatted with my friends so i know right i really appreciate that it was really kind of cool. did i know yeah, right yeah, it's that's just kind like, of exactly what happened that's exactly so. what happened you gotta just you know gotta be you gotta oh just... my god i'm gonna have to get out this booth for my heart it gets so big <laughs> i'm stuck in here <laughs> I'm stuck in this closet <laughs> Which I am uh, currently right yes. now. Yes. Right. In a closet. Yes, I'm just sure it's getting hot in there. We'll let you go. It's actually, it's, it's, I'm doing okay because I put the fan, I have a fan uh, outside that I've got blowing in here. I can't have it on when I'm actually recording. But for this, I was like, it's not going to pick up on the mic. But No, we're good. You know. So I'm so, I'm like, I'm absolutely honored that you guys like asked me to be the first person. Well, I mean, I realize it was a scheduling thing, but I'm really excited that I got to be your thing. first guest. This is pretty you, cool. Just so quickly, happened to be our first guest, and we're honored. We thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in, and we'll have another episode for you soon. Uh, Bridget, hang out for a minute. We'll do yeah. an after thing that no one else will get to see. Thanks Secrets. for coming, every guys. Uh, thanks for coming, every guys. I'm sorry. Thanks, thanks for, for coming, coming every guys. I'm Jared Brushers, Stephen Coghill, and the famous Bridget Real. Yeah. Oh my gosh, honored. I'm thanks, honored. Bye.